At Rescue Education, we have the best explanation every time. I'm Dr. B, and I'm going to help you easily and rapidly learn organic chemistry. If you like the video, you'll love my book. Learn more about it at rescueedu.com or hear more about it at the end of the video. The second semester book comes out in fall 2020. Let's talk about constitutional isomers and units of unsaturation. Doing the problems in this unit will help you to practice generating and drawing correct structures. First, let's learn to derive constitutional isomers when we are given a molecular formula. All isomers are molecules with the same molecular formula, MF for short, but which in some way differ in their arrangement of atoms. All the types of isomers are summarized in topic 5.8. We have already discussed cis-trans isomers in section 1.4c. Constitutional isomers have the same molecular formula, but they have a different order of connectivity of atoms. They may be very similar or very different in physical properties depending on the functional groups present. We'll discuss functional groups in topic 2.1. There are two constitutional isomers of C2H6O. Ethanol is in the alcohol functional group family and has a boiling point of 78.5 degrees Celsius. Alcohols tend to have unusually high boiling points. Dimethyl ether, which is in the ether functional group family, has a boiling point of minus 24.9 degrees Celsius, which is almost 100 degrees lower. You can derive all of the constitutional isomers of C5H12 if you use a very systematic approach. You want to make sure that you find all of the unique constitutional isomers, but don't draw any duplicates. Here is my method. Always draw the long chain isomer first. We'll call this molecule A. Then take a CH3 off the end and put it on the second carbon to get your first branched isomer B. Next, move the methyl down one more carbon. When we do this, we find that this third molecule is also B, but just drawn in the reverse order. Cross this out since it's a duplicate. Next, take another CH3 off the end and move it to the second carbon to get C which is the most highly branched isomer. These are three unique isomers with somewhat but not vastly different boiling points. All of these molecules are in the alkane family and will have similar physical properties. Pause and try this sample problem. Draw all of the unique isomers of C6H14. There are five of them. If you draw any duplicates, be sure to clearly cross out one of them. Use line structures to represent your molecules. We start by drawing the long chain isomer, which we'll call D. Remove the NCH3 and put it on the second carbon to get E. Move it one more carbon down to get F. If you move it one more carbon down, you get E again, except drawn in reverse order. Cross it out. Now, take another CH3 from the end of E and put it on the second carbon. This is isomer G. Move this methyl down one more carbon to get H. It may get confusing to see which structures are the same and which are different. You can build models of each to convince yourself these five isomers are different. When we learn nomenclature in Unit 3, we'll be able to name each of them. If the isomers have different names, they are different. Now let's use the concept of units of unsaturation, UU for short, 
to get more information about possible structures when we are given a molecular formula. It's very valuable to be able to tell if a potential molecule we draw with a particular molecular formula may have a double bond, triple bond, or some rings. Units of unsaturation, UU for short, can be calculated to tell how many double bonds, triple bonds, and or rings may be present when we try to draw a molecule from the molecular formula. In some books, this may be called the Hydrogen Deficiency Index, HDI for short, or Index of Hydrogen Deficiency, that is the IHD. The rule is that every two missing hydrogens from a fully saturated molecular formula is one unit of unsaturation. If two hydrogens are missing, the molecule has one unit of unsaturation. If four hydrogens are missing, the molecule has two units of unsaturation, and so on. The exact calculation depends on what type of atoms are in the molecular formula. Let's look at the different cases. We'll start with hydrocarbons that have only carbons and hydrogens. Saturated hydrocarbons have the generic formula CnH2n plus 2. Propane, with the formula C3H8, fits this pattern. We'll show both the Lewis structure and the bond line structure, but from now on, we'll use only bond line structures. Like all saturated hydrocarbons, propane is saturated with the maximum amount of hydrogens possible and is not able to react with any more. It has only single bonds, which means no rings, double, or triple bonds. Unsaturated hydrocarbons with the formula CnH2n are missing two hydrogens and so have one unit of unsaturation. A compound with one unit of unsaturation will have either a double bond or a ring. The formula C3H6 fits this pattern. There are two constitutional isomers for this formula. One isomer has a double bond and one has a ring. Unsaturated hydrocarbons with the formula CnH2n minus 2 have four missing hydrogens and so have two units of unsaturation. A compound with two units of unsaturation will have either two double bonds, one triple bond, two rings, or one double bond and one ring. The formula C3H4 fits this pattern and there are three possible constitutional isomers. Here are the three isomers. One isomer has two double bonds, one has a triple bond, and one has a ring and a double bond. If an oxygen, nitrogen, or halogen is present, then generate a temporary modified hydrocarbon formula for purposes of the calculation only. Subtract this temporary formula from the formula of the fully saturated hydrocarbon to find out how many hydrogens are missing so you can calculate units of unsaturation. If there is an oxygen in the formula, then ignore the oxygen to calculate units of unsaturation. C3H4O becomes the modified formula C3H4. We subtract this from the fully saturated formula C3H8 and find that there are four hydrogens missing and the formula has two units of unsaturation. Two units of unsaturation can mean two double bonds, a triple bond, two rings, or a ring and a double bond. Here we have the first compound with two double bonds, another compound with a triple bond, and then the final one we choose to draw is a four-membered ring with a double bond. If there is a halide in the formula, then we replace the halide with a hydrogen to calculate units of unsaturation. C3H3Br3 becomes the modified formula C3H6. We subtract this from the fully saturated formula C3H8 and find that there are two missing hydrogens. This means that the formula has one unit of unsaturation. 
One unit of unsaturation means either a double bond or a ring. The first two compounds have double bonds and differ only in where the bromines are located. In the first compound, one of the bromines is on the double bond. In the second compound, two of the bromines are on the double bond. The third compound we choose to draw has a three-membered ring with two bromines on one carbon and one bromine on another. If there is a nitrogen in the formula, then ignore the nitrogen and subtract a hydrogen to calculate units of unsaturation. C4H11N becomes the modified formula C4H10, which is the fully saturated formula, and so there are no units of unsaturation. There will be no double bonds or rings. The first compound we draw has an NH2 at the end of a long chain. We can also have the nitrogen in the middle with two carbon units on either side. And the last compound we draw has one two carbon unit and two one carbon units. Pause and try these sample problems. Show the calculation of units of unsaturation for each molecular formula. Give five examples for each. There are many possibilities, but try to give representative ones which show all the types of bonding. In A, subtract the formula from the fully saturated formula C6H14. There are two hydrogen atoms missing, which is one unit of unsaturation. This means there is a ring or a double bond in each molecule. The first molecule we draw is a long chain with a double bond at the end. We can also draw a branch chain molecule with a double bond, a six-membered ring, a four-membered ring with a two-carbon unit off of it, and a three-membered ring with one carbon units coming off of each carbon. In B, again subtract the formula from the fully saturated formula C6H14. There are four hydrogen atoms missing, which is two units of unsaturation. This means two double bonds, a triple bond, two rings, or a ring and a double bond. The first compound we draw has six carbons in a row and two adjacent double bonds. We can also have a branched compound with two double bonds. Another possibility is a compound with a triple bond. We can also have a six-membered ring with a double bond. And finally, we can have a compound with two four-membered rings connected. In C, we ignore the oxygen to get the modified formula C4H8. We subtract this from the fully saturated formula, C4H10, to get one unit of unsaturation. Again, a reasonable molecule must have a double bond or a ring. We can have a CC double bond, or we can have a CO double bond. The CO double bond can be in the middle of the chain or at the end of the chain. Finally, there are several possibilities for having a ring. We can have a four-membered ring with the oxygen included in the ring and a methyl coming off of it, or a five-membered ring with the oxygen included in the ring. In D, we convert the chlorines to hydrogens to get the modified molecular formula C4H8. After subtracting from the fully saturated formula, we find he, we have one unit of unsaturation. Here are some possibilities. We can have compounds with carbon-carbon double bonds in which the chlorines are not on the double bond. 
another compound in which both chlorines are on the double bond. And one in which one chlorine is on the double bond and one is not. We can ha also have a four-membered ring with both chlorines on the same carbon. Or we can have a three-membered ring with a carbon coming off of it. And again, we choose to put both chlorines on the same carbon. In E, we ignore the nitrogen and subtract a hydrogen to get the modified formula C4H6, which we subtract from the fully saturated formula. The result is four hydrogens missing and two units of unsaturation. Here are some possible structures. We can have both units of unsaturation be carbon-carbon double bonds with an NH2 coming off of it. We can instead choose to also have a carbon-nitrogen double bond and a carbon-carbon double bond. Another possibility is a triple bond. We could also have a five-membered ring which includes the nitrogen in the ring and a double bond in the molecule. And finally, we can have two rings connected to each other, a four-membered ring connected to a three-membered ring. If you're using my book, I encourage you to do the extra test your knowledge problems for this topic so you can be sure you really understand it. All the answers are at the back. This video is closely based on my first semester organic chemistry self-help book. The book is organized into standalone topics so you can quickly teach yourself a few troublesome topics. It's also logical and organized from beginning to end so you can easily learn the whole semester if you need to. My self-help book is particularly valuable in difficult learning situations, but you can also use it to get an edge. If you want to learn more about my books and videos, how to get the books, or my future projects, go to rescueedu.com.